I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. This is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. This is a review thanks to DC. They sent me a request via PayPal. If anyone wants to send me a request for review or movie topic, commentary, uh, feel free to send it via my PayPal. Or if you're interested in joining my Patreon and supporting me, the links to both will be down below. If not, I understand. If so, I really appreciate it. But the like I said, the review... For today is a film called Fluke from 1995. Thank you once again, DC, for the PayPal request. Now, Fluke, by the cover, seems like a very whatever kids film. But it's definitely a flick much more dramatic than what you think. I was impressed by some of the direction, the way the director envisions some of the sequences... Uh, the cast did a fairly nice job. You got Matthew Modine, Eric Stoltz, Nancy Travis, uh, Samuel Jackson, at least his voice. And the story, we see Matthew Modine and Eric Stoltz driving and, okay, something's going on. They're racing each other. We found out later the context of that, but... Matthew Modine, a voice hidden in a vehicle, goes off and gets himself killed in a car crash. And I thought this had some really decent editing. And funny enough, from the first minute, I'm like, okay, this is not the typical film I'm thinking. But you look at the poster, the cover, the opening, it's not as good. But for some reason, it reminded me of Ghost with Patrick Swayze. Only because the way the titles popped up and then I remember when I reviewed Ghost of Patrick Sweezy, I'm like, man, the, the music kind of made it sound like it's a horror film. The, the music at the very beginning here, that, it did it almost made it seem like a horror film or at least a dramatic film. And then it's like pushing to the earth and there's the title of Fluke. I'm like, okay, there's some thought put into this. It's not just blank slate just pop up the title whatever you know kitty type of music no okay this is something else that the director carlo carli the italian director it's a story about reincarnation eric uh matthew modine's character is reincarnated into this puppy who will get the name fluke I have not seen the movie Nine Lives, the one with Kevin Spacey, but I would say, I would guess, if that's how you do it wrong, since it's gotten the worst reviews ever, this is probably how you do that idea right. And when I talk about the, the editing and the direction, like after the crash, you see this like orange heavenly tunnel and then this watery one. Or when throughout the film, this dog, both as a puppy and as a more grown adult dog, it will get these flashes. And the way they envision the flashes, sometimes right in the eye, or they have the eyeball, and you have images in the eyeball. I thought that was a nice way of detailing to the audience what's going on in this character's mind frame. 
without having to throw in a ton of exposition. And the movie's not as much... Of course, when it's grown, you hear the voice of the dog, voiced by Matthew Modine, and then a friend he comes across, Samuel Jackson, voices that character. I'm like, shit, Samuel Jackson really is in every fucking movie. But there's a lot of instances where it doesn't ruin it with out-of-place narration dialogue. I just see a film... I'm trying to... What company released this? Uh, I'm curious. I think it was... MGM. I just see if this was Disney or some other company just forcing a lot of... Oh, we gotta have... It's a dog movie and we gotta have the voice, so say something in this scene and say something in this scene. It seems like there's a lot of moments where they just let the dog act and certain staring and movements. Definitely commend the, the dog trainers. The, the dog trainers did a wonderful job, especially on our lead dog here. This, uh, I believe, is a golden retriever. Which I'm not sure if it's... For some reason, I, I keep thinking it might be the same Golden Retriever that's in the Air Bud movies, but I could be wrong on that. Could be a different dog. So don't don't quote me on that. But yeah, it's a movie that maybe for the first half of the film, you may be thinking, is this movie going anywhere? Because it does do, it does go a little bit of the running time to really get into the, the gist of the plot. And while there have been films that I'm like, are oh, you going to get to the story already? Is there a story to this? That they annoy me more. Here, I think just because how it was handled, uh, the cute puppies and dogs, the... Again, the surprising for a film called Fluke, yeah, the cover is like a dog in shoes. Maybe my low expectations kind of helped in favor of the movie. We see it in a way born with its mother and other puppies just put in the pound, which by the way, I, I guess go off tangent. I fucking hate pounds. I do. I fucking despise pounds because I despise the fact that they kill the animals after like two or so weeks. And I know people are like, well, they don't have the funding and, you know, they don't get all this money. Just let the fucking animals out. It's one thing if the animal is literally trying to kill people. That's one thing. But if it's a fucking kitten, a fucking puppy, either just fucking take it in yourself until it's grown up and then just if you don't want it just leave it oh well, that's me no have let it try to survive is better than just all right killing it give me a fucking break i mean i know people disagree with that that's fine that's just my own two cents i fucking hate the pounds or you know what if governments can support other stupid shit support the fucking pounds But I mean, what do I know? But I mean, you see the puppy escape. And, you know, you have this whole such of the film where it meets this old woman who's homeless. And there's that part that goes, did this whole thing with the homeless lady. You could take that out of the film and would not affect anything of the plot. Because you literally go from he escapes the pound and then to the sequence where he meets Sam Jackson's character. So again, the old woman homeless lady bit, you really did need that part. But I that was fine because I thought the lady who played the, the homeless woman, she did find the acting. And... You know, the puppy was cute. I 
that's really that's the only reason I could say those scenes were fine. But in retrospect, you didn't need those scenes. So again, maybe that's something that could have been stiffed in editing. Uh, I'm 50-50 on it. I'm on the fence. Meet Sam Jackson voicing this other dog. Uh, the guy who gives him food is actually Bill Cobb, who I remember as Zachary Lamb from Demolition Man, who Stallone curses at. It's a goddamn shame. And then that's when he finds the... So much for the three seashells. Time passes. The, the dog is growing up to be Matthew Modine. And he keeps getting these flashes to his life, which is he, his old wife, Nancy Travis, his son. And again, some of the directing choices were interesting. Like when the dog is looking at a license plate and the way it has the numbers of license plate change without the camera really moving much. And it turns to a, the phone number as a, oh, well, that's a nice intriguing way to showcase the thought process of that without having to overly explain it, but the audience gets what you're doing. Gets, oh, I, you didn't have to explain to me by out of place exposition. I, I did it. He's remembering his phone number and thus dial, goes and tries to dial the phone number. Again, some nice visual touches with the, the uh, Ron Perlman, he's also in the film as a guy who's an asshole who takes fluke. Gonna have this other guy test him with shit. Sam Jackson jumps in to save him, but gets shot for his troubles. Then that's when Matthew Modine's character is like, I'm gonna go find my family. And ultimately does. Again, there's some nice dog coaching with this. Like when it watches the family or when the family accepts him. Doesn't know who he is, but accepts it as a, hey, a nice cute dog. It pulls the covers over the boy in bed. Uh, try to think of another scene that showcases the dog. I had one at the tip of my tongue. I can't remember now. But again, some nice, uh, solid dog acting. I know that sounds stupid, but uh, it, it does pertain well to this movie. And you do get some narration from Matthew Modine, like, wow, I'm playing with my kid and I didn't have time to do it before. There's this whole plot that's kind of a... Uh, not catch 21, but he thinks it's going left, but it's really been right the whole time where he thinks Aristotle's helped get him killed. I'm like, is this going to be ghosts, but with a dog? Because that was another one where he was murdered and but gets revenge. But no, that's not the case. He realizes that he remembers it differently. And some people might get mad at that because it seems like the movie's going in one direction for but I thought, okay, that's a different take on it. A different way to, to put it. There's some decent emotional work. Again, uh, interesting that it's a bit more dramatic than I thought it would be. Uh, Matthew Modine does okay as the voice of Fluke. Sam Jackson... Maybe because, like, man, I, he's in every fucking movie. Part of me wonders if I would have chosen different actors as the voices of these two characters. Again, they did fine, but just not fantastic. But they did fine. I like. I don't mind Matthew Modine. I wouldn't say I'm a. I like, love Matthew Modine. He does good work. It feels like Full Metal Jack did in this. But again, you know, I wouldn't say I love it. But he does find Sam Jackson's like, okay, Sam Jackson, yet another movie. I'm sorry I keep like hesitating and stopping because I liked the film. I wouldn't say I loved it, and I can't really put my finger as to why. I think it's one <laughs> to be perfectly honest, I think because I saw this after I saw another film which I'll review called Hachi, a Dodge Tale. 
which is yeah, another dog movie. That one was a definitely I felt more of the tugging of the heart and the dogs did not talk at all in that. I think because I had my heart tugged in that movie and then I saw this, I'm like, oh dear. It's a well done flick. It's a well done family film. It's not a film that results in fart jokes or any of those stupid jokes. It's not a stupid kids film. Idea. It's a film that's much more dramatic, has a much of a heart compared to others. It's a nice story about reincarnation. There's a little bit of heavy dramatic points in the flick. And I would say a little bit of a welcome surprise. I keep harping on the fact that based on the advertising, you would think it's just another dumb kids film. Or it'd be a film like The Shaddy Dog or I haven't seen Nine Lives, but based on the trailer, I'm like, no, this is easily a better, more heartfelt not cringeworthy at all effort of a, of a motion picture. And I won't go through everything in the movie, but it just... Maybe it is Matthew Modine and Sam Jackson. Like, again, they did fine, but... If you had Patrick Swayze... As the voice of the lead dog. Or if he had. James Woods would have been interesting. Or even Brad Dourif. Which that would be. A, a, or Michael J. Fox. Well actually he voiced a dog. In Homeward Bound. Um, the Matthew Modine did alright. It's just. There's a lot of other actors. Even like John Cusack. Just think of other actors I would prefer more. And then Sam Jackson. I like Sam Jackson, but even I'm getting like tired of seeing Sam Jackson in movies. Once in a while he hit a home run like the Hitman's Bodyguard, which was hilarious. But it's like, oh god, he's in Oh yeah, he was in that fucking Tarzan movie, and he's in this fucking movie, he's in this fucking movie, and he probably I'm surprised he didn't say fucked in this movie. He does not say fucked in this movie. I'll give you that. But yeah, at the end of the day, nice, heartfelt story about reincarnation with some good directing touches, a competent cast, and I do appreciate that they could easily have gone to the dumb, stupid kids direction and the director wanted to veer at a different, little bit more dramatic Tell a story that's a little bit more worth telling, a little bit more pathos than you're expecting from a flick called Fluke. And you know, I give credit to that. So that that goes a long way. So either way, thanks, thanks for watching. Take care. Sorry, I repeated the same things like 15 times, but sometimes that's how it goes. Thank you guys. Take care. Stay tuned for more Patreon and PayPal reviews. See you guys later. Bye-bye.